All right, fish peeps, I promised you day two that we were gonna have something pretty exciting. We actually stopped in Indiana, and we are in Kokomo, Indiana, and we're at the house of an absolute legendary aquarist. Today, we're gonna take a quick tour of his fish room and get to meet the one and only Mr. Jeff Cardwell. Hi, my friends. Here he is, the legend himself. We're all crisp. We've been woken up. We had a great breakfast. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Oh, glad to have so, you. So, you got to tell us what makes Jeff Cardwell tick for fish. Well, I'm, I'm, I like anything that swims in water, basically. So right. I got turtles and snakes and axolotls and, of course, tons of fish. And, um, back in the 1980s, I wanted to go actually see where my fish came from. So. I got to take a trip with Paul Loisel and Dr. Loisel, and we went to, to uh, Peru to go look for Pistogram and Yep. And uh, we went about 5,000 miles, and we didn't find any, but it got me started going, and I've been back 46 times since then. 46 times? So south, and, <laughs> south and Central America, and of course, I've been collected all across the United States, too, and it's been a great hobby. I've got friends all over the world from the Tropical Fish Hobby, and it's been, yep. it's been great. Basically, everything in the tank behind you is none of that. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, it's none of that. I wanted, I've got a 800 gallon tank built into the wall here in the basement of my house, and I wanted to just have some colorful fish that the grandkids would like to watch. So in your basement, you have all sorts of different tanks that are kind of set up already, and I love it, the fact that you have all these nice little easy chairs set up. What, what's your method to your madness for the type of fish you got? Well, again, this the, the middle room of my basement's just pretty tanks and colorful fish again. So people will come over and see <clears throat> every year. I've got the uh, little school preschoolers come over for a field trip, so it's like going to a public aquarium for them. And so these are fish from different areas. The one you're just panning by now is all stuff I brought back from Colombia. Uh, the next tank is things that were found mostly in Vietnam, where I went a couple of years ago and had one. So there's a kind of a regional theme, but I've also got kind of a real mixed match of fish in different tanks. Yeah, you don't have anything specific that just, you, you just love everything in general. Yeah, I, I, I've got everything from killifish to big cichlids in my fish room. This is some uh, leperinus and some diamond. We talk about a catch-all tank. Uh, there's the equid and latifrons from one of my Columbia trips. There's uh, strawberry leperinus, there's some other oddball leperinus, and I don't have a clue what the species is. I just caught them and brought them back. Some Odessa barbs, you got a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a little bit of every continent <laughs> represented here. So. Now, as a disclaimer first, is a lot of people, if you're watching this type of a YouTube video and you're used to seeing real pretty set up beautiful tanks all the time, that's not the purpose behind this room. This is a working, a true working fish room, and you've bred hundreds and hundreds of species of fish. Yes. And it's understanding the fish, and with all your experience of traveling in the wild, of understanding the natural habitats, so you've been able to set up to breed and keep. And you have, we noticed that there's lots of empty tanks all over the place too. That's so you always have space whenever you travel right. and you come back, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go down to the ACA convention, and I know there's gonna be something I can't live without. <laughs> so, but uh, there's, um, a little bit of this, that, and everything. Things I'm either conditioning for breeding or, or past their prime, but still have a place in the fish room. So. Yep. Everyone, everyone lets their natural life out here. Yeah. You've even got goldfish. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, Gary Hader gave me in Cincinnati was nice enough to donate some Calico Cokeye Blondie goldfish. Yeah, there's, there's everything. <laughs> so yeah, you weren't kidding. You got turtles and stuff all over the fish room. Which, what's the story behind this one? So this one is, is an Asian leaf turtle, Cyclemys dentata. And it's uh, 53 years I've had it in the house. So You've owned this since what, 1971? Yeah, it's 1971, <laughs> so 51 years. And uh, it's, it's a female still lays eggs just once in a while, but I need a male to go with it eventually. But it's been, it's been with me for a long, long time. And what's the lifespan of a turtle like that? I would guess 75 years or so. Oh, okay. Like so she's so still in her prime. It may well outlive me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, this one's a pretty special one. This is an absolutely outstanding animal. So this is a Mata Mata turtle um, from Peru. Uh, and it's been, I've, I've had one of these in my fish room for years and years and years. This one's about seven years old now. And he kind of looks like the bottom and I'd stick my finger in front of him except he'd bite me. Yeah. And his neck is about this long. You can stretch it all the way out. And he opens his mouth real fast and sucks the fish in, spits the water back out and eats the fish. So. Is it, it's range, I know it's South America, is it? A very big range, or there's a wide range across the Amazon, and they've just now recently described a second species that's from uh, Colombia. Oh, okay. So Colombia, Venezuela. Yeah, that thing is an absolute dinosaur. Yeah, it just looks like the bottom. Yeah. Now the algae and everything—that's a snapping turtle from South America, basically. Yeah, pretty much so. Not a real strong swimmer, but but uh, really effective predator. All right, Jeff, what are we looking at now? Well, this is, I was just in Brazil collecting in the north part of Brazil with some friends, and um, this is a Branti piranha, it's giving me, he loves worms, and he'll come right to the top to get one, or I think he will. So this is a scale-eating, uh, fin-eating piranha when it's small like this. Yeah, it's got different teeth than what you'd think with a normal piranha. But they're plenty sharp. They draw blood for sure. <laughs> anyway, he'll get about five or six inches long from as three inches he is now. That's something that's, that's got the story. You collected it yourself and you brought it back. Yeah. Yep. You got all sorts of, you can have the pistos up here breeding. Right. There's a little female guarding babies. Right. Well, actually two of them guarding babies at the back of the tank there with a bright yellow color. Yep. I don't know what species this is. It was another one that was collected in Brazil up in the North Park this last trip. So that's what makes it exciting for you. Is bring, you bring it, collecting your own fish and bringing them back. Yeah, you work with you know we work with a collector uh, and then I have a licensed exporter to send the fish out and an importer in the United States. It's <laughs> a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive than it used to be, but it's still fun to do. Yep. So. What's in the next one? Um, Native American fish, uh, blue spotted sunfish, and river fronds killifish. Um, there's actually a few ancestors from another trip in here, but um, all, all natives. I like collecting native and keeping native fish. Oh, yeah. Nobody would think that that's just an ordinary native fish, at least not in Canada. Everything we have up there is big and mean. Yeah. But they, you know, this is a beautiful, it's a killifish, you said, right? right? Yeah, red fin killi. It's very attractive. Um, and then the last third tanks, miscellaneous things that are eventually going to go into the Vietnam tank. But, uh, oh, okay. Purple passion, uh, danios, and tiger barbs, and uh, a few pearl brownies in there still, I think. So, Very cool. Back to the idea of just liking a little bit of this, that, and everything. Yep. <laughs> no, it's an exceptional fish room, Jeff. Thank you for giving us a tour. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs>